So you actually wrote this book with your children. I did. Mm -hmm. And it's only been a year. How did you process and say you th go from processing death to I need to write a book and help others? You know, I just watched the struggle that my kids were going through. And I actually, you know, I went on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and trying to find something that we could use to cope at nights. Nights are the hardest, it seems like, for everybody when, you know, dealing with anything. But I just wanted some story to read to my kids at night. And I just could not find anything. I couldn't find anything that really, you know, suited them or helped them find comfort and peace. And so, you know, I was like, let's just write one. One month. And two days after this television appearance, she was arrested and charged for her husband's murder. Yeah, exactly. And it's, you know, explaining to my kids just because he's not present here with us physically, that doesn't mean he, his presence isn't here with us and he's doing these things with us. And he's, you know, here for birthdays and he's here for Christmas and, you know, and it's just comforting to them to know that you know they're not living this life alone like mm -hmm. dad is still here it's just in a different way a different way well, well here's the news we've now learned that authorities believe eric the late husband of corey richens had his wife's medication in his system when he was poisoned according to recently unsealed search warrants in addition to fentanyl in his system quote eric also had a small amount of quetiapine in his stomach contents eric did not have a prescription for it, but his wife had a prescription as well as the pills at her home. According to the website for the Cleveland Clinic, that drug is used to treat mental health disorders, including schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, but it can have some dangerous side effects, including fever, stroke, pain, seizures, and more. Cuspel's three sons were sleeping when the 33-year-old allegedly fatally poisoned her husband with a cocktail. Joining us now is Greg Scordis, attorney for Eric Richens' family. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Appreciate it. All right, so what do you make of, of this new development? How damaging do you think it is? I think it's more damaging than, than maybe some people do, Dan, in part because uh, the, the contents of this drug were found in his, uh, in his stomach. And there was a lot of fentanyl found in his stomach. A lot of it hadn't even metabolized into his blood yet. There was so much poison that he was administered that it hadn't even gotten into his bloodstream. Had, had the, the amount of drugs that were found in his stomach uh, gotten into anybody's bloodstream, it would have killed an army of people. So I, I think it also goes to perhaps maybe some way that she was thinking of maybe, uh, you know, making him tired, making him go to sleep, making him more relaxed, giving him this drug that could make it more easy for her to administer the fentanyl. So I think it's good evidence for the state. I think it's important evidence for the state. And it's something that they've known about for some period of time, as you indicated accurately a minute ago, Dan. It was it was recently released. The evidence of that was recently released because of the fact that the search warrant uh, is no longer sealed. Right. Uh, and, you know, we also know that there were Internet searches for luxury prisons for the rich in America. Can cops force you to do a lie detector test? Death certificate says pending. Will life insurance still pay? How to permanently delete information from an iPhone remotely? What is a lethal dose of fentanyl? Those are not helpful either. <laughs> no, those are not helpful. They're very helpful to the state. They're certainly not helpful to the defense. So those are things that, and, and I think we just know the tip of the iceberg on this, Dan. I think there's a lot more information that the state has. They only had to show enough to get uh, the, the bail set at, at no bail. And so they showed the court at just a, at their hand. They showed a little bit of their hand, but there's a lot more than that. And, and that's the kind of stuff that you can't even make up. This wasn't a bright murder. It wasn't a brilliant uh, execution. And a lot of times homicides aren't. And this is a perfect example of something that was just poorly executed because I believe that Corey felt like with a fentanyl death in, in 2023, people were just not going to look at mm. it very seriously because so many people experienced that. Let me ask that. you this, Greg. So Corey's friends have spoken out defending her. I want to play you a piece of sound uh, from it. This is number three. Oh, sorry, this is a full screen. It says, uh, Eric's family never liked Corey and they want to believe Eric was perfect in every way that Eric couldn't have died in any other way besides at Corey's hands. What do you make of that? Well, I, I think that we're going to hear all kinds of things. There's no evidence of that. I mean, th this was a family that was very close. They shared uh, Sunday dinners together. They visited a lot. Uh, Eric and Corey's kids were seen by the family a lot. There's no evidence of that whatsoever. I think it's 
it's people making up some things after the fact to try to justify what is a completely unjustifiable act uh, by Corey Richens in taking the life of her husband so that she could get his money and that so that he wouldn't take part of her, what she thought was her money, by getting a divorce yeah. and, and breaking up the marital relationship. I'm only Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.